Doodle bud here, in case you can't tell, I've been doing some 3D printing. Now, much like when I review a fountain pen, the best thing that can happen with a pen is you get it, you put ink in it, pen to page, and it writes perfectly. Well, that's what you want with a 3D printer as well. Now, I have another printer that I've been using for a while and has been really frustrating. I finally got the thing to print properly. It's mega slow, and it's very temperamental. There's a bunch of other jobs I've sent to it, and it has failed. Well, this is the King Room KLP1 that was sent to me for review. I guess they uh, took pity upon me to see all my frustrations, said, hey, try out this new Core XY system that we got. Now, this printer does remind me of fountain pens. I commonly compare the expensive version of a pen with a much lower price version. This is a Mont Blanc 149, retails for like eight to $900 US. This is a competitor one made in China. Pretty darn good for a fraction of the cost. Well, that's sort of what this printer is. The KLP1 is a lower cost version of a very popular printer called, oh, oh, let's put these away so they don't fall. That was a close call with the pens. But back to what I was trying to tell you, uh, this is very similar to a popular 3D printer called the Bamboo Labs P1P. Those things are getting rave reviews. They look like a fantastic machine, high speed, high accuracy, all sorts of great stuff, lots of materials you can run through it. They run about $6.99 US regular retail price. Of course, there's always sales, but that's the standard retail price. This machine has a lot of the same specs and the standard price on this is $3.79. So almost half the cost, what are you getting? What aren't you getting? And uh, there will be a link down there in the description plus a discount code. So I think it's like $40 off they have on running on this machine right now. So. That's quite enticing, but you got to wonder, well, is it any good? So I've been doing all sorts of 3D printing. I got to tell you, it has been fantastic. I talked about getting a pen that works out of the box. This printer has. All I did is I followed the instructions. Well, here they are over here. A few simple assembly steps. Um, and I tell you, it just went together no problem. There's a little comment I have on one step but was a little bit off they could improve. I only spotted one typo. Here it says use 16 M3 by 16 screws. It's M3 by 6. That was the only thing wrong with the whole instruction set. It went together. I put in this applied filament, put the file in it, hit the go button, and 25 minutes later I had a Benchy come out that was pretty damn good. I have done tons of prints with my other printer I have in my office, which is mega slow. I have yet to be able to make a Benchy look this good. And that was at 50 millimeters per second. This was printed at 350 millimeters per second. This has just made my life so easy. So then I swapped out, got a different filament. This is uh, this was actually the King Rune um, high speed filament that they supplied with it. So it's worked quite well. This is my one of my favorite ones. This is my Duramic PLA Plus. I threw this filament in and ran the Benchy and same thing, pretty darn good. Not quite as nice as the high speed filament, but it came out pretty good. Obviously, I could probably tweak some settings to get it flawless. What else could I do? So I saw everyone playing with these. They would get the file, download it, throw it to their printer, and they have this awesome, cool articulating dragon, and it looks really fun and neat, and kids are playing with it. I downloaded this file a while ago, tried making it, and I couldn't even get anything to stick to the plate. When I switched to this uh, Silk PLA, it just came out like goo, and I spent well over an hour and a half trying to get the settings right to print something. I couldn't even print a cube. I put that same PLA into this printer uh, multiple times, different ones I had, printed all these dragons. They all turned out perfectly. This was the most recent one. And there was tiny little, they looked like spider webs. That's the extent really of the stringing I had on these prints. And they just came out flawlessly. So this thing, I was really, you know, I wasn't sure how good it would be, but this thing has been fantastic. So I'll run you through how I put it together really quick, a couple of comments I have on that, give you some of the innards, and then show you some of the prints I've been running. So the beauty with these machines, now the other printer I have, it's not this setup where it's called a Core XY. All you have is you have your 3D print head that goes back and forth, and then it goes up on the frame, and then your build plate is the other axis, and it goes this way. So the cool thing with these, because the Z axis is just a true Z axis, it only goes down. That's all it does. Very, very slow. You got two guide shafts and a lead screw. Now the Bamboo Labs will have like four guide shafts. This just has two. So there's a little cost saving going on. But these things just go down really nice and slow because you're not putting any momentum into the part. Perfect example is this arm wrestling grip I made. This is quite a tall part 
long cylinder, very simple, but this is all the adhesion you have on there. I didn't even print this with a brim or a skirt. I just put it on there, printed this at 300 millimeters per second, and because all it's doing is the build plate is slowly dropping down, you can run the print head mega fast. So here you have uh, steel linear guide rails and you got linear recirculating bearings uh, for the uh, uh, guide bearings on here. It's not carbon fiber like on the high-end machines, but it's nice and rigid. You have the whole structure here all put together. You got a, a steel frame, black powder coated, and you got your main core XY stage. This thing is super solid and rigid. So this you can move super fast and not have to worry about your part jiggling around. All it's doing is just slowly going down and you let the print head go super fast. So this is what's great about this type of design. Like the Bamboo Labs and other printers like this, it also does the uh, vibration compensation. So these print heads move super fast. And when you're moving it fast, the frame's gonna vibrate. There's gonna be vibration in the system. And now they have a compensation for that. Now, what I, I don't know 100%, but just coming from sort of the engineering angle, how I would tackle this, what I think they do on here, is you put an onboard accelerometer. And during that test, I'll show you some footage here in a second, you're gonna cycle this head back and forth super quick in either direction. So let's say you send it a 50 hertz signal. So it's gonna go back and forth super, super fast, 50 times per second. You're sending that signal, the onboard accelerometer will tell you what it's outputting. And so there'll be a little bit of a differential because you're getting the harmonic vibration into this whole frame because it's vibrating too. It's gonna to impact the output compared to what the input signal is. So what you could do is map it across a range of frequencies and now you essentially know the error and you can have that as a compensation. When you connect to this, now what's really cool with this is it connects through Clipper. Now that might not be exciting to you if you've been around 3D printing, but for me, the only interface I had on my other printer was a little dinky screen with the knob and you send it a file, hit the button and that's all you do. So all the data actually comes out in the log file when it's doing this. So it's actually quite fascinating to watch. That's been great. So you can run these things high speed. They even calibrate for that. At this price point, it's pretty impressive. They're doing all those same types of features. As I said, the instructions were pretty straightforward. All you have to do is put on the panels. There's a little bit of assembly. You got ones on both sides of the front and then uh, I can't remember, yeah, the top as well, you had to put that on. And then your little handles here. So pretty simple stuff. Now, one comment I will make, this is a steel powder coated frame, as I mentioned. Uh, there are threaded holes in the frame that these panels fit into. They didn't plug the holes during the powder coat, so the holes got gooey. It's, it's only an M3 thread that's in there. So do yourself a favor. One, uh, at, at the factory, they should plug those holes during the powder coat, but two, they didn't. Uh, so what I did is do yourself a favor. I just took one of the screws before I put the panel on and I ran it through all the tapped holes in and out to make sure I would sort of clear the excess powder coat. So when you go to put the panel on, the screws thread in nice and easy. You got your connection ports down here for your ethernet. Of course, I just run this off my Wi-Fi and then your USB ports. The only other thing you have to assemble on here is just your uh, filament spool holder. Um, now, one thing with the designs, it's pretty basic. Um, I, you know, it ends up scratching the frame a little bit, not the end of the world, but I find it's a little bit low. It should be sitting a little higher. So the bottom of the, the uh, filament here off the spool kind of goes directly into your runout detector. I think it should just be sitting there just a little bit better. Now I know it will sit higher than the machine, but so what? I think that's one adjustment they should make. All I'm going to see about designing a new holder. If I do, I'll put a link in the description. Don't know when that will be, but check back. If it's not there, I will try to do that. You run your filament through the detector into your tube, and then of course it just goes right down there into your print head. So I decided to add in a little bit of footage I took while I was initially working with the printer and doing some prints and different things I was doing. So this was the very, very first Benchy that came out of the printer. And like I said, this thing was flawless. I just kind of sat and looked at it for about 10 minutes because I. <laughs> I've never had a Benji come out this clean, this quick. So now I knew I had a printer that was going to print some good stuff. So time to start making functional things. The first thing up was a uh, grip that I'm doing from arm wrestling. So I'm training with someone and he's really good at what he does. 
told me these are the grips we need, so I designed them. Now I got the 3D printer and they're printing really well, so I just would pop the cover and check it out because it, it just doesn't look natural how fast this thing's moving. So I was super happy and then would come back. I'd set it up at night, come back in the morning, pop the cover. It was all looking perfect. No, I didn't make spaghetti once with this printer, so that was that was a welcome thing. Pretty happy with that and uh, used it in the gym that day then I made a finally a pen tray I do fountain pen reviews and I always have to line the pens up for a size comparison let's make a little pen tray to make my life easier I did it this way too normally I'd have a recess around the edge but I wanted to see just how good the bed adhesion was and the first layer went down flawlessly and I popped the print off like it was just perfect like not one little hiccup a couple little flyers on the side but First time printing with this resin, so let's do some cool stuff now. Again, this is the print of that dragon I was doing and uh, it came off the build plate beautifully. So I thought I would quickly share the most satisfying part of every print. It's peeling it off the build plate. So with this one, we got lots of contact points. So I just give it a little bendy bend and that should do it. And it just comes off perfectly. Like really, really good. It's so satisfying. But yeah, I think this was about four and a half hours. I didn't try to max out speed. I just wanted to get nice quality on it. And it's pretty good. Tiny little details here and there that are off just a smidge. I'm sure if I fine tuned it, I can get it even more perfect. But I mean, this is super good. My old printer could never do this. Little couple, just a few hairs up here. I could pull those off or get a hair dryer or something just to get rid of that. But uh, yeah, pretty fun. Kids are loving those. Hope you enjoyed some of the footage of the 3D printer in operation, but I have really been impressed with the overall caliber uh, of these prints, uh, the layers going together and everything working great. I'm taking these to the gym and I've been using these for quite some time now, like well over a week, I think almost a week and a half now. They have worked perfectly, like serious weight goes through these. Well over 100 pounds I'm connecting onto the weight stack or I use a, a belt to connect to some uh, other uh, plates and stuff like that when I'm doing my exercises these have held up fantastically so i'm really impressed with the quality as well what i am going to do is try to run this thing at full tilt now i've been running at 300 350 millimeters per second i haven't done the full out uh, 500 millimeters per second so i'm going to load it up with the supplied high speed filament and we're going to run the 500 uh, millimeter per second benchy file and uh, i'll go through and show you some of the things on here as well there was one uh, issue that did come up. I ended up, I took a picture and uh, sent it to them to let them know. They were quite shocked that this happened. I'll tell you what that is uh, and how I went about fixing it. And they, they are working on this uh, behind the scenes right now as well. So I'll give you an update on that. But uh, one little thing I did notice, you, you uh, have this little touch screen. It's a bit cheesy, but there is a pen to go with it. But it has been to do with the connectivity. So what you do is you connect to it just over your web browser. There's a few ways you can do it, but I just do it over my Chrome browser. Punch in the IP address. Now, one thing it has changed on me a couple times, the last couple numbers. So you can see here in my browser history, dot seven eight is what it was before. It's changed. I have to put to dot seven five. You hit the enter key, and then now you are connected to the printer. So you can see everything that's going on. You can home your all your axes as well. You can send your temperature profiles and get all the information that you want from here. You can see your hot end, your build plate, all that stuff that's going on. You have your files that you've been sending. So again, for you out there that have been using Clipper for a while, you know what this is all about. But to me, who only had a little cheesy little knob to interface with, I couldn't get any of this information. So this has been fantastic. What I'm gonna do now is uh, just warm up the nozzle and we'll swap out the filament. So I set the command all of about 20 seconds ago to warm up to 220 and it's already up the temperature. I just hit retract in the interface and there comes the filament, we pull it out. So it's pretty easy on that. It's a little cumbersome, but not too bad. Now this sample they supplied isn't on a spool, so I am worried that it could possibly snag, but we'll see what happens. The nozzle is still warm. I have it loaded, so I'm just gonna push it in just to get it started, there it goes and out comes the filament. So out with the red. I'm gonna to have to extrude this a little bit more. We're just starting to get the white. It's coming out nice and smooth now. We'll warm up the bed, the chamber, everything up the temperature and we'll print the high speed. 
So while the bed is heating up and everything else, figure no time like the present to show you the one sort of, well, I guess fatal flaw that did come up. Let me take this off. This did not come with the printer, okay? It was just uh, like so. There was a little zap strap down here. And as you can see here, let's zoom you in. This is the issue. So with cable management, what was happening is this top panel comes down and the cables were not clear of that. So they were sitting here and they'd move around and it would rub. And I didn't notice it at first, but after I did a bunch of jobs, I noticed, wait a second, what's that going on? So this sheathing here is actually a fairly high friction. It's got a bit of a bite to it, a little stickiness, and it's rubbing against this panel. And because this uh, XY here, it doesn't go down. All that's done by the Z axis. This is gonna rub the whole entire time during the print and it rubbed right through the sheathing and started getting into the jacket. So I brought this to their attention. They hadn't heard of that happening before. Um, I, you know, I could just print with the lid open. What I did is I just went down to my local Princess Auto Harbor Freight Tools if you're down in the States and got some of this cable management jacket. Uh, oh, now it's, it's up to temperature, it's homing. And uh, before I break something here, oh, there we go. Um, I wrap this here onto the cable. This is a fairly low friction uh, covering. So that's the biggest thing I wanted. I re wanted to reduce the friction uh, when it hits the lid. I've been running a bunch more prints now and there's really no markings going on here. So this is a bit of a Band-Aid fix. It is a fix for the time being, but I expect uh, for this cable management to be improved uh, coming from the manufacturer. Got the cable jacket back on. It comes in a big spool. Now there is this little tool that comes with it. What you do is you put your wires through there and then this will feed through. And then as it goes down, now it's getting onto your wires. So you just run it along like so and uh, it puts itself onto the wire. So that's uh, quite a nifty little setup. We're up to temperature. I'm gonna load the file and let's see how fast this goes. This is a handy part. At the start of each print, it automatically does a little purge. It does two lines to clear out the nozzle to help ensure a good adhesion on that very first layer. Let's see how fast it goes. So I got some of the footage here, just showing real time so you can get an idea just visually of how quick the head goes. And it's it's pretty quick, especially when you're doing uh, quick circles around perimeters and stuff like that. The thing moves ridiculously fast, so it's kind of fun to watch. What I did now is I just set the camera up lower so you can get a different angle. And then what I did is I time lapsed it so we could just watch the whole benchy go along. But like I said, since you're not wiggling that part, you can go fast. Okay, so the print finished and I managed to not run out of phone uh, battery power. Also, I was hold my breath because this is how much filament we had left. This thing's looking pretty good. Let's uh, pop it off the bill plate here. Like it just comes off beautifully. And the total time on this, where were we? Oh, it doesn't show it. Went into the history and managed to find it there. So 21 minutes, 44 seconds. There was uh, 53 seconds of warm up time. And here it is. I mean, this thing is pretty good. Teeny little bit of stringing going on, but this is at full tilt. Let me get the uh, one I did at 350 so you can see side by side. That's the 350, this is the 500. And as you can see, the quality on the 500 is almost as good, not quite there, but this is the, the thing that I have really enjoyed with this printer is I can find out if there's a problem so much faster instead of coming back multiple hours later and then seeing uh, yeah, nothing has been working and there was a giant problem. So if you can get your material settings sorted out quicker, your nozzle temperatures and uh, flow rates, bed temperatures, all the other stuff you have to do, maybe tweak with the ret retraction and whatnot, you can run these test files and then you can run your big files knowing very high likelihood it's going to run no problem when you're not there to watch over it. So overall, I have been nothing but impressed with this machine. They haven't had any failed prints. Everything has worked as soon as I took it out of the box. Just like a great fountain pen we take out of the box and it works perfectly, <laughs> this thing has been doing the same thing. So now I'm really excited about all the projects I want to do. I want to actually uh, move forward with 3D printing my own pen. I have a 3D printed writing robot I want to be able to use on the channel. Bunch of other stuff I'm working on as well. And I got to say, this thing has been great. Now, like I said, a few nitpicks I had on assembly, 
a little IP issue. I w wish you could make it static somehow. I don't know how to do that. Maybe there's a way to do it. Uh, this has been the one thing like that was that was bad that it did that. Here's an easy fix. So I am looking forward to seeing on what they do to fix that. Uh, again, I've seen the Bamboo Labs and then the Creality K1. They just have a cable track on its side to keep the, the cable low. So that's that's got to get fixed on there as well. But uh, if you have one of the machines uh, and you're having that issue, it's about a $10 fix and then the whole thing runs. Of course, you can just have the lid open, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, a simple little fix to that problem. I'm gonna leave it there for now with the printer. Keep your eyes open. This thing will be featured more often. You'll see all sorts of uh, things I'll be working on and projects I'm gonna be printing using this thing. This is a game changer, at least for me. And if you have been looking into one of these, these King Rooms, the KLP1, uh, I've done a bunch of testing and it has been fantastic. So for the regular price right now at 379, there is a sale going on, another 40 bucks off the link and discounts in the description. So <laughs> $339 and you're getting that type of speed and all those features. I am thoroughly impressed. This has performed much better than I thought. So as always, if you have any uh, questions or comments, I'll do my best down there in the comment section to chat with you and address those. Uh, description will have details plus the discount code. Thumbs up, subscribe button, hit that. Until then, we'll catch you next time.